This is a general introduction on how to title assets. Typically, the formal trust name is trustee one, sole trustee or his, her successors in trust under the RLT name dated RLT date and any amendments there too. Sorry, I forgot to put that on the screen. Um, or if there's more than one trustee, trustee one and trustee two, trustees are their successors in trust under the trust name, date of trust date, and any amendments there too. Now, in institutions, they might go with just the RLT name, maybe the RLT name and date, some will name trustees, some won't. Whatever the institution does is fine, but this is the formal trust name. Now, if the assets are the separate property of one spouse, take assets, take title of the assets directly in the name of that spouse's separate trust. So here's an example. Husband's separate property subtrust of the RLT name, also known as the Husband Living Trust, dated RLT date four. Don't worry about the dates, just pointing out it may not be the same date. Or why separate property? Now, we create seven trusts for married couples specifically because it's easier to deal with these separate and community asset issues that come up. And a lot of people don't do that. They think, well, I can put, I mean, my trust even says, if I put separate property in my joint trust, it still retains its separate property character. Yes, but it may have created a presumption of community property that can be disastrous on down the road. Now, what if the assets are in a business entity? Well, you can take title directly in the name of that entity. And here's an example. Officer name, officer title, business entity, like John Doe, president of Joe Enterprises, Inc., or John Doe, manager of Doe, LLC, or John Doe, manager of Doe Management, LLC, the general partner of Doe Enterprises Limited Partnership. There's a lot of ways it can be done, but it's not quite uh, the same thing is with the trust. It's actually um, simpler because you're only dealing with the officer name and the title of the business entity, uh, or their officer title in the business entity. Now, under the Texas Property Code, it outlines what should be in a certificate of trust to constitute proof that the trust exists. The certificate of trust, we haven't stated it here, but it does go by other names. Third parties may be held liable under Texas law for damages that could occur for demanding a complete copy of the trust instead of accepting the certificate of trust that has all the information required by law. Now, some institutions will want more information and it's okay to give them some, but let me give you an example of a case I had come up. Um, a third party demanded a copy of the trust. Well, the trust had been restated. They wanted the, the original trust. The issue in the case was that the husband had four adult children. He remarried a lady who had two minor children, then adopted his minor children. Then he added them as beneficiaries of his trust. Now that old trust being out there and the institution having it, if they have to, um, if they're subpoenaed, for a copy of that trust, they have to provide it. And nobody knows the liability that could occur because of that. So if there's a dispute between the two sets of kids, that institution demanding a copy of the trust can pay for it. And those lawsuits can be very expensive. You can spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, which is why Texas law says the certificate of trust is proof that the trust exists. 